praise the Lord. Other half just had to depend on God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. How many of you talk to the Lord this week? I talked to him at 3 o'clock in the morning, not by choice, but by reason. You know, when God wakes you up, he gives you a reason to get woke up. And if you pay attention to this this morning, some of you, and I'm telling you, before I get started, I don't make promises that don't get delivered. Brother Joe will tell you that when he gets back. You've got to know what you mean and mean what you know from God. Some of you will get healed today. Chata kasi tia, ikali anda si, rande kasi anda la katia, aiki si anda la kata, i anda kasi tia tia. Ye said God, I shall awaken that which is in me to a greater height than they've ever known before. God shall give you the desire of the heart. Praise the Lord. Praise God. I've had that for about 20 minutes over there. God is good. <laughs> he is a good God. I'm trying to orchestrate this the way the Lord wants it to happen. It's easy to get up here and just read and, and preach. But see, God's got a hold of this service this morning. I don't know why everything happens the way it does, and, and it's not my real concern to figure out why it happens the way it does. But when God speaks to me, I know when he's speaking to me. If you got a problem, I want to get some of this message out, Lord. I really do. But if you got a problem, when I call for you, the elders come up and pray for you. I want you to get up out of your seat and immediate notice and come. Don't let me have to sit there and beg you to come or anything like that. I'm telling you, God wants to do something great for you today. This all happens for a reason. He's a good God. He's a pleasurous God. He wants to please you today. I was in the bed last night, 3.30 in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning actually, I looked at the clock. I couldn't really tell whether it was 3.15 or 3.30, but I knew it was an hour went by. And he told me, how many of you know that when he made this statement, Jesus is above every name, in heaven and earth. Every day. Now I've always thought of that as being the kings and the governors and the senators and the presidents. But he enlightened me last night. He's above every name in heaven and in earth. You know what that means? He's above cancer. Amen. He's above diabetes. Amen. He's above all kinds of flus and epidemics. He's above everything that calls itself a sickness or a disease. He's above everything that causes itself to come upon this earth that somebody put a name on. That was the first time in my entire life that I thought of it that way. That he's above everything that has a name. Pay attention this morning. Psalms 18. Okay, thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, because his mercy endureth for when? Ever. Praise God. Let Israel now say that his mercy endureth forever. 
There's no stopping point. It don't last for a little while. If you get engaged with the spiritual world of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, you don't have a stopping point. You see, four years ago, I tried to rest out this thing. I, I preached all over this country. I, I tried to do what God wanted me to do. I did everything that I possibly did what he told me to do. He even took it to Europe and other places. But that wasn't all of it. I wanted to stop. Honestly, I wanted to stop. I was tired. I can't tell you how many sermons I've preached over the years. Sometimes four or five a week. You see, I didn't just preach in the church. I preached at a nursing home. I preached at uh, different places that they called me up and said, could you bring a message this morning? And most of the time, it was like this week. Two days before you get ready to, to do it. And I kind of wanted to just rest it out. And actually, the Lord gave me a dream and said I could if I wanted to. But that which was inside of me called Jesus Christ and His power and His Spirit and His understanding and His knowledge and His wisdom and all the good things that He gave me down through the years, I cannot allow myself to sit on a pew and say I don't want to do it anymore. Not that I don't want to serve God. I just don't want to always be preaching the gospel and having to entertain people's sorrows and upsettedness and frustration and depression and everything else and find out. But in the day that we're living in, it's more of a dire need today than it's ever been in the entirety of existence. You know why? Because just like the brother said this morning, Jesus is coming soon. And we don't have time to sit around and wait. We got to get it done. Let the house of Aaron now say that his mercy endureth forever. Praise God. Can you imagine? God has an unlimited mercy. He has an unlimited compassion for his people that he's created. You would not be in this world if God didn't want you to be here. Praise God. The gates of the Lord were so open that we were allowed to walk in. Open the, the gates of righteousness, Lord. That I shall give thanks unto the Lord. Open these gates. Fling them wide open. Don't allow yourself to be shut up. You know, I've had to visit people in, in, in dire times just back in the past time. I had to go to their houses and actually give them communion because they weren't able to get out. Don't allow yourself, as you sit on a pew over and over every week, and you don't allow yourself to find the mercies of Almighty God. God has unlimited mercy. Go ahead, brother. Let them now that fear the Lord say this, mercy endure forever. If you just fear him and reverence a little bit, he'll give you the most wonderful things that he could possibly ever create in your life. We shall all answer. My prayer is given in victory. You want victory this morning? You want to see something really happen in your life this morning? Give him thanks. This week we're coming into a spirit of of thanksgiving that everybody has enjoyed for years and years and years. But, you know, unless you give the Lord thanks for what He's already done, He may not understand why He can't give it to you more. You need to understand that God wants you to humble yourself and come unto Him in a reverent way. Not in a fearful way. Let, so let us rejoice and be glad this day has been made unto the Lord. This particular day is made unto the Lord that you receive the good things of God Almighty. You didn't come in here because I was going to scold you. At least if you did, you're never going to get that from me. 
I don't need to scold anybody. I need to bring you to a point in action that God loves you so much that he'll tear out these walls if he had to, to give you what you have need of. He'd tear his town apart if he needed to. He'd get to you some way, somehow, to get your favoritism and bless your heart. I've seen him, <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Over the years, I've seen God do marvelous things. Salvation shall be granted with their success. You want success this morning? How many of you need something this morning? Raise your hand, come on. How many of you need a financial blessing? I may even need a spiritual blessing. I may even need a, a, a healing blessing. I was going to have you name your blessings of what you need. If you needed a blessing this morning in a healing way, tell it to God. Pastor Lynn and I, we can't do a thing for you. But God can open the windows of heaven for you out of us. You can't even contain it. And he's not just talking about money. He's talking about opening up the treasure chest of God and pouring it out. There's healing in that treasure chest. There's spiritual manner in that treasure chest. There's also money in that treasure chest. And if you need God to do something for you, just allow Him to open up the windows of heaven and do it. He light shall shine upon us through the horns of the altar. You want something from God? Get a hold of the horns of the altar. You are my God. I shall praise you and give you thanks. David said, You are good to all that believe, for your steadfastness is everlasting. He will make a path straight. All these crooked things that's going on in the world, one day will come to pass that be made straight. I will lift my eyes. Oh, hallelujah. You know, I hate to see people come to the altar like this. Lift your eyes into the Lord where your help comes from. Lift your eyes up and say, God, I need something today more than I've ever needed in my life. I need something today because if I walk out of this building today, I may never have a chance to get it again. Do you realize that? I don't believe in coming to church and just give homage. It's great. But I believe in coming to church and get in touch with Jesus. Get in touch with the Holy Spirit so that when He comes and reigns in your heart and your life and gives you something greater than you ever expected. I was in a service down in West Palm Beach. Actually, Mark Beach. There was 250 some people in that service that morning. There was 10 preachers in there. We were all seated. The power of the Holy Spirit came down Got a hold of all ten of us. I was one of them. You see, pastoring churches isn't all that easy. A lot of times you have a lot of frustration, a lot of hurt, a lot of pain, a lot of sorrow, a lot of sadness. And as you do this over and over and over, you build it up inside of you and you say, how much more can I take, Lord, sometimes? But you know what happened? That particular service, he touched ten preachers. He reached in my soul and you ever figured that out. And to this day, that's about 10 years ago, I cannot even think of what somebody did to me wrong. I wasn't expecting that. Them other 10 preachers wasn't expecting that. But God reached down in our soul and just emptied everything out. <sighs> just like it was gone, boy. I mean, it was, it was like a jet plane taking off. And I have felt better and greater than I've ever felt in my life since then. God can do marvelous things. Great things in your life. Just allow Him to open up the windows of heaven and do it. Honor and majesty is before Him. Let God know what you need of. King asked one time, old Daniel was in the stretch. The king asked him, he said, Daniel, which are the children of the captivity? Trying to smock him a little bit. You in captivity, boy. I have heard of thee that the Spirit of God's dwell in thee. The light of excellence and wisdom is found in thee, Daniel. Can you dissolve this doubt 
of the writing. If you can, now this is where he put it. Says, if you can, here's a man walking with God just came out of the mind of being over it. If you can, I want you to do this because if you do this, I'll give you the third ruler in the kingdom. Now, that wasn't a blessing coming from jail to the third ruler. Ruler in the kingdom. I don't know how you get any better than that. I would have said, no, I'm on second rule. <laughs> I wouldn't accept it just the third rule. Well, you know what the story went. He took care of the problem. Are you able to take care of the problem? Can you dissolve doubt? In your heart this morning. You know what keeps you from having the greatest things in God? And I hate to tell you this, and, and you know, please forgive me for having you invite me that way. Just doubt. There ain't no other age. If you're not well this morning and not free from sickness, it's because you have doubt that God can do it. There's no other reason. I can't make it happen for you. Uh, Brother John, or Brother Joe, or Sister Christina can't make it happen. You have to be the one to say, God, without doubt in my heart, I come this morning with all authority that Jesus Christ is going to set me free from the bondage that's inside of this world and in me. And you have it. There's five little voices we listen to. Anybody name The Spirit of God. With demonstration. The voice of conscience. Oh, conscience plays a trick on you. It does numbers on you wouldn't even believe. The voice of reason. Oh yeah, we gotta reason everything out. We gotta we gotta understand what the program is. We got you know, this is not the voice of flesh. Well, I've been trying a long time, you know, Pastor. I've been really going up there many, many, many times. Do it again. What's going to hurt? You know, many times. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I just shame to tell you this, but it took me over a year to quit cursing after I got saved. One solid year. And every week that devil would come to me and say, How can you get best to be saved and doing that? One year. I went to the altar so many times, they thought I must have been the biggest sinner in the world. I'd go every Sunday. Every Sunday, I'd go up there and say, God, I, I got to get rid of this. I got to get rid of this. I can't help nobody if I don't get rid of this mouth. I'd mark myself right up there. I preach, I'm here again. Same old thing. One year. And about 40,000 prayers. And finally God took it away from me. But see, it wasn't an easy thing. Don't quit on God. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. You gotta wait sometimes for something. He wants to know whether you really mean it sometimes. The voice of Satan causes bitterness, confusion, and doubt. The voice of flesh causes overeating, laziness, and shiftless. The voice of conscience brings correction and instruction. The voice of God brings changes and transformations. So which voice do you want to listen to? There's 12 gifts that God gave. Well tried to do. I'm going to tell you these and then I'm asking you to get ready to come and get something from the Lord. 
Oh, Benjamin, I want you to picture yourself into this program here. I want you to picture yourself into what you may be as a tribe of Judah. And if you can't find yourself in any of these 12, you need to get saved. Oh, Benjamin, beloved of the Lord, dwell in safety. Oh, Joseph, blessed of the Lord, receive the dew of heaven and the precious things of his house. Oh, Levi, accept the word of the hands of my covenant. There's everybody should have that. The words of his covenant are truth and faithful. Oh, Reuben, live and not die. Everybody should want to live. If you don't want to live, there's something wrong somewhere. I'm ready to go to heaven as soon as he calls me to go. But I just soon wait till he calls me. You see, the devil has already tried many times to snuff out my life. But it wasn't God's choice. So wait until he's ready for you to come up a little higher. Higher. Oh, Zerubbabel, Joyce, and coming and going out with treasures hidden in the sand. There's what we need to be right there, Jerusalem. Find those hidden treasures of God. You know what that's called? Favoritism. You're favored by God. If you can reach into that treasure box and pull out what you need, you got the favor of God operating in your life. Jerusalem is the only one that can do that. Oh, God, he that dwells like a lion brings Judah and justice. Oh, Dan is like a lion well ever learning. You can't quit learning in God. You've got to continue to learn and learn and learn and be more educated and be more smarter and be more and, and, and bold into the spirituality of God so that when He comes up, things come up all the time. You've got to be ready. And the only way you do that is by learning the things of God. Oh, not that satisfied with favor, full of blessing. Oh, Asher, let him dip his finger in my oil. Whew. Yeah. You got no idea how that just felt, man. It's like you dip your finger and all of a sudden, whew, the whole bottle of oil dropped on you from God. That's what it's all about. Come up and dip your finger in once in a while. And we sit there. Well, I want to say thank you. Ask God. There's no one like you. Excellent in the clouds. You see, he found that God was. He was excellent in the clouds. And he brought it unto himself. Oh, Simon. Hear and hearken. Listen. Full of understanding. If you don't know the Word of God, get something that tells you how it operates. Learn it deeply inside. Bury it in your heart. One of these days, somebody's going to come along and if we live long enough, snatch that Word away. And if you don't have it buried in your heart in a shield of God upon it, you won't never be able to make it. You'll be lost. And you won't know how you got there. Jehovah Jireh. What does that mean? Is it just words? Christine, tell them what it means. My provider. You've got to have a provider. You can't make it in this world on your own. There's no way in heaven you're going to make it without Jesus Christ operating inside your life. 
And it's not words. It's the implantation of the Spirit of Almighty God bringing down the gifts from heaven so that you'll be able to think right, talk right, speak right, learn right, understand right, move right. All these things are combined together. You've got to know that Jesus is alive inside of you. Glory to God. Anybody like this? I think I should be preaching again somewhere. Yes. Hallelujah. I probably will be. When things get bad, I may have a bad week, bad day, bad month, whatever. When things get bad and the storm clouds return after the rain, that's past time. Get up. Take that yoke that's upon thy neck and cast it off. Take that robe and bury yourself under God. Say, Jesus, I need thee more than I've ever needed anything in my life. I've got to have you this morning, God. I don't feel good. I don't look good. I don't act right. I, there's something wrong with my thinking. I need to understand where you're at in my life. I need to understand that Jesus is the author and the finisher of my faith. Yes. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Job knew how, I mean, Job knew how to do it. All on your knees. Naked I came into this whole world. And naked I'm going out. Except for one thing. I'm going to trust Almighty God with everything inside of me no matter what it takes. I'm going to trust the Lord with everything that I ever had. Everything I'll ever be. Everything I ever will have in my life will be under his guidance direction and whatever it takes Lord I want to know that I trust you more than I trust anything in this world even as much as I love my wife you got to have it it's not something you think about it's something you live with failure is not a Fatal disease. Pain and sorrow operates in its own. It needs no help. But sorrow is just for the night. And joy coming in the morning. All right. Come on up, brother team. Come up, play so. I'm going to ask you this morning to do something you've probably never done before. If you've got a problem in your life, and it's a name problem from some doctor, some surgeon, or whatever, I want you to come to this altar and stand right over here. you got to name it first. Once you name it, you understand that you named it. Then you know how to get rid of it. Speak those things that are not as though they were. You speak to that thing inside of you and say, you have no authority in my body. You have no authority in my life. You have no authority because Jesus lives in there. You've got no authority to be around me. Yes, Jesus. Come on up and pray with you. Brother Joe, you know pray this morning. All right, on this side over here, Anybody that needs a financial blessing this morning, I want you to stand right over here. And if you're confused which one you have worse of, stand in the middle. Praise God. And when I come by to pray for you, I want each one of these people to be prayed for. Because it's very important how this is done this morning. It's very important. Listen to me. I want you to tell me. No, I don't want you to tell me. I want you to tell God. Is that what changes things in my mind and heart right quick? I want you to tell God, I am tired of this that's in my body. I don't want it anymore. I ask this day that you grant a miracle 
in my life. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Now, whatever you do, please do this for, me. Thank you. for my sake. Don't hold back. Please don't hold back. Whatever God asks you to do, if He tells you to follow on your knees, follow on your knees. If He asks you to shout, shout. If He wants you to dance, dance. If He wants you to just do nothing but say, cry, cry. But I want you to know that the devil sees that. And he knows you're sincere with what you ask him for.
tell you how you keep it. You know, a lot of people get it. And when they leave the sanctuary, they lose it. I'm going to tell you how to keep it. Don't think about it. Don't talk about it. Don't discuss it at all. If it comes in your mind, say it's gone. Say it I can tell you by experience. About a month ago, I told you how my knees and my back and my legs and my feet hurt all the time. About a month ago. I hadn't had any pain for a month. An entire month. And I made this statement to somebody. I said, you know, I had a pain in my feet for a long time. I talked about it. I invited it back in. When you talk about it, you're going to invite it in. That's why Jesus said in the book, he said, think on holy things, righteous things. Things of good report. You think about it. You talk about it. You want it to come back home. And it came back home. Hallelujah. Oh, God. I got rid of it last night at 3.30 in the morning. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's how it's done. I ain't never going to mention it again. I had mentioned it in the morning because I told you God grace is all over me right now and it ain't never gonna happen right now. But it'll never be spoken of again because <laughs> you know how he tricks you. We are 73 years old Monday, this past Monday. You're supposed to have this stuff. I'm sorry. But I don't have it. And I ain't going to get it back. You know, there's an old joke that went around. I don't know how many of you heard it, but how Arthur Ritus, Arthur was the worst one of them Ritus boys. <laughs> well, the Lord showed me last night in a dream. All this, all this happened in an hour. I'm going to let you go. Five minutes. You told me to get done by 12 o'clock. <laughs> Last night in the dream, the Lord showed me how disease and sickness will hang on. You see, rheumatism, I may have had rheumatism. I've never had it, thank God, I don't know one. It, it attaches itself to one particular area. Most of the time. Bursitis, it attacks a couple places. But old boy arthritis, she can take over the whole body. He can. That's why they call him the worst one in riders wars. Don't let the doctor pronounce a joke on you. You know, they made that, they made that, you know, years ago, they say, well, you got the flu. Remember that? You don't have the flu anymore, you got the influenza. That's the grandpapa of them all. The flu used to be just a bad cold with a little more of that. But influenza came along, the doctor pronounced it and said, oh, you got influenza. Influenza is grandpa. When the flu can't get you, influenza comes by and says, Hello, Joe, I want to come home with you. <laughs> be careful. God showed me all these things. I'm serious. I'm telling you, you got to be careful what you speak out of your mouth. Be careful. Because it's very dangerous. 
What comes out of your mouth usually is what you want. I wasn't going to tell you this, but I think I'll go ahead and tell you this will be the last thing I'll tell you. When I went out to New Mexico years ago, my church clerk came up to me the very first Sunday I arrived there. Brother Ed, I'd like you to come over to my house on Tuesday if you want my house. I said, oh, so, you know, I thought he'd have me at dinner or something. So he tells me, my wife, you know, she went to a soothsayer a couple years ago. And she got this Indian demon to come home and live with her. I can't even sleep in the same room with my wife. He throws me out. That's a pretty powerful demon. Me and my wife went over there to his house, sat down on the couch. Why aren't you going to anoint my house? Said, no, he's already gone. How do you know that? I said, my wife told me. As soon as we got in the house, he was gone. We didn't even say a prayer. We, if you have the power of Almighty God living inside your soul, you don't have to worry about the manic powers. He gone. Two Sundays later, he tells me I can't be the clerk anymore. I have to move. I said, "What happened?" My wife got mad because he left. Because the demon left. She don't want me to be a clerk here anymore. I said, well, you better do what your wife does. I mean, you tell her nothing. You ain't doing nothing. Take authority over your house. Fortunately, I've pastored 14 churches. Not by desire all over, but by reason. Building a parsonage. But all those years, all that work, my wife has never asked me to do anything outrageous or anything I've ever wanted to do. She's never questioned it, never doubted it. You know. That's why. Some things I just doubted myself when I got there. <laughs> but she never doubted it. I want to take my hat off to her. Mary, just stand up. Come on up here. She's got a pain in her back she's had last night. Come on back up here, Joe. I wasn't going to do this because I knew she don't like me. She even singled out. I wouldn't have done it if the Lord hadn't told me. Just call this wrong, but it's gone right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. It's gone. It's gone. You're going to miss something that's never happened, I'm sure, in this church before. Am I right? <laughs> Basically, I don't think it happens anyway. We're going to do something different than you've ever seen in your life. And I would not do this if I didn't think the Lord wanted me to do it. But it's going to be great. It's going to be good. And it's going to be wholesome to take home. And don't forget to bring some food tonight. Everybody bring something that will be in happy territory. Brother.
Brother Ray, would you mind asking God bless him? Mm -hmm. Dear Lord, we just uh, 